Well, this is so cool. I'm using this new tripod to do this video and it's allowed me to kind of hold this camera differently so I'm not shaking all the time. The shaking really bothers me as I'm editing through the videos like, ah, oh, that's so hard in the eyes. So just by holding this camera a little bit differently, maybe it'll increase my production value a little bit. That's super cool. Just little things like that, right? It's all about setting up facility to be able to improve situations. But I just want to let you know that, you know, I'm not doing any of this for any type of compensation or gifts. This is merely a little project I'm doing for a lot of reasons, personal reasons. And it's just really kind of cool and how, uh, you know, there's attention and I'm not... I just want to make it clear that I don't want to be provided with gifts. I do definitely appreciate it, but I'm not doing it for that reason. Like this uh, dead cat here, someone had sent me that a while back just because of the sound quality. And I haven't been smart enough to figure out how to deal with that through a mic until now. But, you know, I, I learned slowly. But I, I've got like a corner in the honey house here full of gifts that I've been getting from people all over the world <clears throat> and I haven't been providing the thanks of that on these videos and well, basically it's just because I'm being overwhelmed and I don't know how to send my appreciation but I'm sure you all realize I truly do appreciate the thought and the generosity to provide those gifts to me it's just I feel guilty of not providing the acknowledgement of it over these videos. So this morning I'm going to be heading out to the yard and we're going to pick up some more nukes. I was meaning to get at that job and complete it yesterday, but I got sidetracked with other types of things. And I wasn't able to uh, dedicate my entire day towards moving bees in. So today I'll get the rest of the nukes in for sure. And then for the rest of the week, I'll be moving hives and have everything moved in by Wednesday, Thursday. That's if I can keep at this job. There's a lot of weather uh, just west of us. We are getting just the drift from that system as it goes through. Foggy, a little bit breezy, cooler. So I'm not sure if we're going to end up getting snow out of this deal or just rain or none of the above. So I'm not sure. But uh, if I knew that snow was coming, I most definitely would be uh, whipped to long hours of work to get these bees brought in. But because the forecast doesn't show that, it's allowed just a little bit of laziness. So I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of poking them in instead of running to get them in. Whatever. I'm getting other things done at the same time, which is productive. But at any rate, these girls are tucked in nicely and content. I'm happy to see the hives just sitting here without any type of restlessness. Because it's going to be a long winter. Just got to make sure they can endure it.
Run away! Boy, oh boy, this little tripod is going to provide a lot different perspective. I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this. You know, just reinforces the whole fact of getting set up with proper facility, right? So I think you'll see a lot more and different angles as I make these videos moving forward. So I thank you again, Joe, for this tripod. I'm having a lot of fun with it. A beekeeper friend of mine from Manitoba here, Brad Hogg, has introduced me to a new type of pallet design. And it's nothing real new. It's kind of how they do th things with four-way pallets. But he kind of modified things to be able to suit a two-way pallet like this. My original design is very basic, very simple. A little bit sloppy, but it worked. I just, you know, pretty much, it's a four-way just cut into a two-way. I just run cleats down to the bottom, right out to the edge, just helped provide stability and then my cleat tops on top and then there's this like cleat onto cleat and they ride all right but you can see how there's opportunity for the load to shift if I was going any long distance it would not work very well and the reason why I do it this way is because I had a lot of these uh, one by fours and I felt if I moved these bottom cleats in too far provided too much instability with my stack as I was stacking honey boxes up on top. 
So that's kind of why I went with that design. But Brad, he showed me, he said, no, why don't we build these pallets so that your cleat on top here is a little bit narrower so then the cleat on the bottom can be further out to the side and that still provides that stability. And by doing that, then you can interlock these pallets and stack them up the way they're supposed to be. So that's a nice secure load. He also added, like this, this is the front, this is the front, this is the back. He added an inch on both sides, or I guess three quarter inch, the same dimensions as this top cleat here. So when you slide the pallets together tight, the lids slide tight, the pallets slide tight, and then when you do the same, well this one's not quite tight, and next row to the side, on this side, the two faces can slide tight, along the cleats on the tops can slide tight. So everything can be strapped down. Once I get this load put on, I can, you know, put a little bit of tension on that strap. And that very active bottom to bottom, cleat to cleat, pallet to pallet like that, is gonna hold this load absolutely secure. So there you go. That's gonna be my new pallet design as these other ones rot and kind of fade away, I will kind of incorporate this style of top, a little bit narrow cleat on top, inch on the back, and then just a little bit offset on the bottom here on everything that gets reincorporated into my apiary. Huh, I'm quite excited about that design. It's gonna, it's, it's really gonna work. Um, the only problem is I have bunches of equipment now mixed in with my old equipment and the two don't really mix together very well so I have to put shims in uh, to allow one of these bottoms to ride on one of those tops or one of those bottoms to ride on one of these tops so it's kind of awkward that way but I'm just going to kind of set my yards up specifically with the pallet design and anywhere where I have problems I just add shims it's it'll get me through and eventually as things go I'll be able to turn everything right over so there you go, an improvement on my pallet design. Just look at how neat and tidy these pallets are. Just love it. Interlocked, straight, right to the top. Oh, I think I'm gonna like this design as compared to my old design. You know, a little more sloppy very basic. See how I'm conserving space at the top, which is good. A little more sloppy down the sides, which doesn't really create too much of an issue because I'm, I work pretty slow. You know, forklift work is much easier when everything's streamlined. straight, make less mistakes, and hopefully it will result in better transportation and less spills. So there you go. Thanks Brad for bringing this design to me. I have a few tweaks, but other than that, she's a good one.